Hi everyone and welcome back to my devlog. If you're new here, I post videos logging the progress of the new third person looter shooter mobile game I'm developing called Nest. So consider subscribing to follow along. Unfortunately, these aren't our fireworks. Because where I'm from, they've actually been banned and replaced with a laser show. But anyway, Happy New Year everyone, and I hope 2020 is a good year. Now, even with these past two weeks being especially busy with family, I still managed to find time to work on the game. So let's get into the progress I made. I started off by designing the rest of the base camp, and decided on what I needed to model for it. This included, among others, the supply crates, medicine cabinet, and world map. And after placing them in Unity, I ended up with this. In the last devlog, I showed what happened when you interacted with the different props. But now that I've finalized the system, I'll explain how it actually works. Throughout the scene, I set up empties, which act as camera views for each of the base camp props. By clicking on an interactable object, it will set up the view by setting the targeted transform, which the camera is following, to that view. By following, I'm simply referring to these lines of code, which cause the camera's position and rotation to linearly interpolate towards the targeted transform. Now, camera movement is only part of it. When the view is changed, an event must be fired, and this is where delegates come into play. For example, when I view the consumables inventory, the enter event fires and opens up the cabinet door. When I leave that view, however, the exit event fires, which then closes it. My next task was to animate opening and closing of the supply crates. On the front of each crate, I placed locks with lights leading up to them. This is used to show the crate slowly unlocking and makes opening up the crate more suspenseful. The particle effects, as well as the camera and weapon movement, then make receiving a weapon feel more spectacular. In order to keep this immersion consistent throughout the base camp, I needed to redesign the character customization menu which I introduced in devlog number 8. Instead of having it as an overlay, I added it to the world space and then rotated it slightly towards the player. This was also my idea for the weapon inventory, but it ended up being much trickier to implement. For this, I wanted to place weapons on the weapon rack and then have each row be a different weapon type. At first, I used a basic scroll view and then disabled the weapon models whenever they left the rack. But this definitely didn't feel immersive. I then realized that my asset Simple Scroll Snap would be perfect for this. Not only did it have the scrolling and snapping functionality, but it also allowed weapons to be infinitely scrolled as well as dynamically added during runtime. Next, I knew I needed to instead use a mask for the game objects, but I had no idea how to achieve this. After a quick Google search, I found that I needed to use stenciling through the help of shaders. So let me explain how it all works. Let's say our screen's resolution is 10 by 10 pixels. In modern graphics hardware, for each of these 100 pixels, they would have color, depth, and stencil buffers. The stencil buffer in particular stores an 8-bit number, that is a number between 0 and 255. Now, let's assume the stencil buffer for these 100 pixels was the following. By using a custom shader for each material, which compares against the stencil buffer, we can then specify which pixels we actually want to render. Next, I added the ability to zoom in on each weapon and view the information menu. This shows each weapon's statistics, but also allows you to equip them to the player's different weapon slots. The different weapon types can be equipped to the following slots. Lastly, I made it so that when you unlock a weapon from the supply crate, you can then also view it in your inventory. For this, I used the scroll snaps 
to snap the targeted weapon to the center of the weapon rack. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed or learned something, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to follow along on the development of this game. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.